before the advent of the camera, Orientalist artists were already capturing a fantasy image of the Arab and Islamic worlds that played to fascinations particular to Europe. I mean, in a sense, Orientalist art is as revealing of the psychology of Europe in the 19th century as it is not revealing of what the Arab world like world looked like at, at that time. And I think then when you get the advent of the camera, we start to get something that is perhaps more grounded in the visual reality of the region. But let's not get too drawn in by that because there was still such a notion of the framing and the, the staging of the photographic image. First photographs, of course, were quite slow. You, you had to remove a lens cap and mm -hmm. allow enough light to filter into the you know, to, to give uh, an image on the, the, the silver covered glass plate and whatnot. And, and so th these were often studio photographs using costumes or if they were taken outdoors where you would have people assume positions and sit for a long time while you could capture the image. In other words, you, you have the photographer playing much the same role of imposing a kind of fantastic notion on the image. And I think by the time we get to the moving picture, you know, starting with Rudolf Valentino's uh, personification of the fantasy of uh, a desert shake, uh, very much playing on the fascination with T.E. Lawrence and the Lawrence. First World War and all of that. Um, you know, you, you can really trace a history right through the modern film industry of how the way the West has projected certain images onto the Arab then become the kind of stuff that informs the way it is filmed and portrayed and which I think, you know, only today are you really beginning to see a backlash against as more actors from the Arab world and more directors from the Arab world are beginning to try and combat against this kind of Western imposition. But it's, it's been a hard road. 